important to know about the gems built. Hey, well, thanks for joining me. Well, I can't believe anyone thought I was actually going to kind of seal up this hatch. Um, I've only obviously put this board on so I can come outside and make the hole. But it means that it's all in one place and in one piece. Obviously, it's only just secured on that baton there. But I managed to get the cuts right. Now I can finish off this main hatch cut. Jobs are good. Un. Well, I've got a couple of bits in the post today, but this all's also arrived. This is from my mum and dad. Um, it's perfect for the uh, for the stove. And for the first time ever, I've actually got a proper coffee on board, so that's really nice. Eh? Thank you, guys. And today's my dad's birthday, so happy birthday, dad. Favourite recipes with beer and cider? Why do I get the feeling this is from Carol? Wow, this is brilliant. Beery beef with crusty toppings. Oh, wow. I mean, it's mostly about beef, in fairness. Oh no, fish, fish and cider. Wow, that is old school. And it's got stories about why certain boaters use them. That is amazing. Thank you for that. It's a wooden spoon with a narrow boat engraved on the back of it. Isn't there something about receiving a wooden spoon? 9970. Well, thank you so much. Canal boat wooden cooking spoon. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. This has got Carol all over it as well. Favourite recipes with Scotch whiskey. Pan fried halibut steaks with Scotch whiskey. Well, that is, uh, that is brilliant. Venison banahara baba bean. Wow, cool, thank you. British sausage recipes. I didn't know there was a whole book of British sausage recipes to warrant an entire book for it. Wow. That is superb. Thank you very much, Carol. I'm guessing it's all you, Carol. Bless you. Right, let's crack on with that bow. Can that edge up? Good. Well, now the hatch has been kind of cut out, I need to trim away these lower edges here. But now I'm considering whether to adjust this straight edge at the bottom and have that also curved so it kind of comes up to here up to that top point there and then on the slope all the way down. I'm wondering if that's going to look all right. And it would give me a tiny little bit more clearance in that area there. Not by much, only by two inches or so. Right, I've marked out the lines on this now. 
the cut lines. And that takes into account just a straight edge across there. I could always bring that up and follow that line basically up and round. So now I've got to cut this out. So I'm going through this with the multi-tool. So I get quite a good control on that. And I need to see the line and see the cut. So I think this is better than the mini circular saw. Obviously the finish isn't brilliant. But it's going to have trim on it anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that. Yeah, that line from where I am, obviously it needs tidying up quite a lot, but that line works really well. And it's shown me that this definitely needs to keep that line going and go around there. I need to get rid of those bits now. Okay, so just after the first kind of rough cut, that's how it's starting to look. So obviously you need to improve this area down here, make that line a bit nicer. But I'm happy with that. I think it needs to come up there though. I need to continue that line across. Well, I'll trim that one out first and then I'll have a look at that one. I'm gonna have a coffee now on my new coffee pot. smells amazing so that's what she looks like at the moment this edge here needs to be tidied up a bit more here I'm just gonna make another line and kind of keep that line coming just down here a bit more sand it down and file it down make it nice and level and neat and then obviously I've got to do the same on that side there and then I'm going to scribe up to there and then down again I think that'll look really good I'm just using 
the real tip of the corner just to make an incision all the way around to, to create a line and then once I've kind of got a groove I can then go through it fully. Yeah, so that's worked out quite well. I need to improve the lines a little bit and start the coming back a little bit further on this side and on this side. But I'm now gonna take that back panel off and scribe a curve up there to continue that curve. I now need to cut the arc on this backboard here. Um, as you see, I've taken it down and I've secured it in, in position here. There are loads of ways of cutting out an arc um, and measuring an arc. Obviously an arc is part of a circle. Um, this is quite a large kind of span um, and it's very shallow. So therefore the center of the circle will be, it's massive. So if I was to use the approach with string, um, I'm gonna need quite a lot of space and obviously I don't have much space. So um, I'm going for an alternative method of drawing an arc and for that I need a flexible rule. Um, you can use anything kind of flexible, maybe some kind of birch or something like that, but essentially what you do is you mark out the centre point of the of where, you, of where you need to be. So I've got to be, this is 82 centimetres, so the halfway point is 41. 41, I'll just draw a straight line up, and then I want to work out the height of the arc. As said up here, I just want it to kind of come up by about two inches. So I mark out two inches on that center line and put a point in there. Now what I want to do is get a straight edge and go from that point there to the end of the board like that and I want to I don't have to make a marking but on the off the board on an off cut I'm just going to make a marking down there and then I'm going to do the same here so from there straight line to the corner and then over there somewhere on the off cut put line now those two lines dictate where I should put in the anchors so I'm using just long screws here these are the ones that Saki Baga gave me months ago and a few left so you need a long screw and the reason you need a long screw is because you then get your meter rule put it against those two screws push it up to the center point or the mark that you want and you should find that those lines there match up perfectly with the with the corners because obviously that anchor I know is in a direct line with that high point so once it's in position you can you know I could put a screw in there as well because that's an off cut this is going to come off so I could put a screw in there and hold it in position actually I will that in there, that in there, and there's my mark. I get my pencil, hold it in place so it doesn't wobble. And there it is, perfect dark. I can go around that with a jigsaw and cut it out. So 
So there's the arc cut out. Yeah, that's going to work fine. Happy with that. Well, I can get that put back up. there we go I'm glad I didn't go any higher that's only two inches I think that's right but it's much better than the straight edge well I'm really happy with how that bow has turned out I've got to do some more trimming up those two sides um, round to the front of the bow but yeah it's going to be good and I reckon once the paint has been put on it's going to kind of bring that to life a bit so that's really good um, I had to pop out to Market Harbour uh, and pick up this from my fabricators. Um, so this is just a plate with obviously a pipe on it uh, and that is to affix to the other side of this wall here which is where my comms mast is going to come down. Um, you may remember it had a bit of an ugly hole cut out into the back of this boat. Um, so. I can't repair that hole because of the spray foam insulation. Basically, you just need to apply so much heat if you're welding, uh, if, you, if, you know, if you're overplating. The amount of heat that would be required would certainly catch fire to the insulation, but it would burn these two boards as well. So um, it's got a lip over it, so I'm not too worried about rain coming down because it's quite, it's quite well sheltered. So this is just going to basically, I'm going to just drill and tap a few holes into this. That will sit on covering that hole and then the comms mast will sit in the bottom there and it's got a cover on the bottom but enough to allow obviously rainfall to cut to seep through so i'm just going to apply some red oxide to this tonight and then i can whack it on the boat tomorrow and put my comms mast in which is important because i had a conference call with work today um, and um, apart from the fact that they've all told me that they watch the channel which is a bit terrifying um, but um i need my 4g and my wi-fi kind of like in a better situation than it is because halfway through the phone call i had to hang out the window because my 4g dipped below two bars and <laughs> my boss was uh less than impressed let's put it like that so um yeah that needs to be addressed this weekend so i've got all my paraphernalia for it now i've got the bracket i can whack that on the other thing i need to do this weekend is uh have dinner tomorrow night it's only me again so um, but you guys can choose what I'm eating. So I'm going to have something out of the boating recipes book. Um, I think this is pretty apt. Each recipe in here tells a nice little story about how it originated. There's 46 pages in here. Basically, the first person to put a comment down saying page number X, Y, Z, whatever it is, I'll make that. Um, I'm hoping the only the only the only kind of caveat I've got to that is that I'm restricted with what I can put in the stove. Uh, obviously, I don't have an oven, but I reckon most of these things uh, I can make on the hobs. There's some really interesting stuff here. So, uh, well, let's see what you pick up. I'm hoping it's not the fried eel, but I'm not going to tell you what page that's on. Um, right, until next time, catch you later. Bye-bye.